and hello again and here we are for what I think is vlog number six here at Hamilton Performance in sunny Warrington. The sun's still out, it's now late July and the place is pretty busy and here we have Tim working on something a bit different. This is a Multimarini 1200 special Scrambler. I'm not sure what it's here for but I think it's having some words in it Tim. Has it been decatted? It's been decatted. Has it been decatted? It has been decatted. Okay so the decat is going to be a bit louder. Um, it is now going to be tuned by the ECU. Okay, so Tim, so this has been decatted, but I can still see a hell of a lump there in the uh, exhaust system beneath the engine. Is that an aftermarket part? It's got multimedia on it, so is that. This? Uh, yeah. No, we've taken that off. The cat was in there. Oh, so that's where the cat was? Yeah. And the whole exhaust has been opened up along its wells. And it's been gutted. Um, it's, and gutted as the, the, the cat, catalytic converter and then yeah. re welded up around the seams. Right, because obviously I don't suppose anybody makes decat kits for this thing because it's such no. a rare bike. Yeah. There's yeah. hardly any of them about. And no, no. You could replace it, you know, you could get someone to make some yeah. replacement tubes to replace that catalytic converter box, but it's been opened it's up. It's a lot of work. Gutted and then re welded. Yeah, so yeah. For okay. yeah, it's a lot easier just to. For 120 quid, it's been opened up and emptied. And, uh, emptied of it. And then re welded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By a nice man called Jeff, no doubt. But Jeff oh, has him. Jeff, Jeff yeah. our welder. Yeah. Jeff the welder there yeah. with some very nice wells yeah. on there. So he's done quite well on that for us. So, and these cans that are on it now, are they original or are they. That's original, yeah. Right. Have they been gutted or are they still. No, they've still got their silence. Yeah. But I believe the cat these days makes quite a big difference to the noise, so. Without the cat in it, uh, yeah, it be a bit well, noisier? it just allows a more free flow, and I don't know, until we started it up, I don't know what sort of no, it's gonna you're going to get with yeah. the uh, exhaust gases in that chamber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be louder though, isn't it? It'd be nice and raspy, I've no doubt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this engine is what, a V-twin 1200cc? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was some sort of Aprilia replica, but it's not, is it? It's some one-off engine made for Marini. Proper Marini. Marini design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah cause, uh, Sam was saying he's now Gilardoni. the technical. Oh, whoever that is. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, Sam was saying last week he's now some kind of technical assistant for yes, Motor Marini yeah. in the UK. Yeah. So that's uh, quite interesting. There's the pipes there. Look. You come and tell me how to pull this back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not always as easy as it, as, as it looks to be. And what else are we going on here? What else? We've got a pretty nice BMW R1000RR with a Acropovic. What's this in for, Tim? Just there. That's going to be mapped, uh, mapped on the power. Okay, it's going to be mapped. That's just turned up. We've got quite a nice Envy Gusta over there. An early one. Over there in the distance. So, is that in for service? No, that's got a weird yeah, fault on it. A weird fault. Uh, when you turn the ignition on, it shows 100, 100 degrees C on the dash. The fan comes on and it won't start. <laughs> right, okay. Typical Italian electrics. Yeah, and the Gusta looks like fantastic, but uh, the uh, wang on these early bikes the isn't exactly Honda quality, I don't think. No doubt, I'll get slagged off for saying that, but it's true. They're well known for having uh, electrical issues, just like Ducatis, I guess. Yeah, the wang this thing isn't uh, too neat and tidy, is it? Mind you, it does look absolutely fantastic, I must say. Let's just stand back, admire it, and uh, yeah, I'm sure they'll sort it out. And then over here, we've got oh, we've got the Honda CB Thunder 4 that we saw, I think in V Log number one or two, when the engine was in bits, and it's now actually been rebuilt and it's been put back together again. Uh, See, it's not on it yet, but it looks like it's uh, almost, almost complete find out um, it runs or not yet, because I've never heard this thing running yet on that uh, GP5 so-called. Okay, so the Marini is now running. It's been decatted, not quite as loud as I thought. There he goes. It needs to be uh, mapped yet, but it's running okay. Yeah. But 
but then again it still has the original pipes or rather the original uh, baffles and there he goes and let's see if we can get him coming back here he comes Sam's going to have a go now. It's got a flat spot on it, as expected. It's not been mapped yet. Quite bad, that flat, is it? Yeah. And here we have a brand new Harley. Let's glide. And it's a CBO model, that's the Custom Vehicle Operations model, which is a limited edition. It costs lots of money. I'm not sure what bits on this are standard or not, because it's really blinged up. I don't even know the standard shocks or O-lins on these things, but it's got quite a big engine in it. It's got a brand new M8, or 8 valve, 117 cubic inch motor in it, so it should make quite a lot of power. Um, Again, I have to wait until Sam comes back and we can ask him all about it and what's going to happen with it today. Okay, well, it looks like it's there. been uh, modified somewhat, to say the least. Let's just look See around here. Yeah, Twin all these shocks on it. The only reason I've had to buy these bloody calipers is because the hypotaining pins are in the from America. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. It. Okay, it's, it's having a new pipe. It's that base run, it's a new it's pipe, and then he's getting a map from the ECU with power vision. Again, right, right, okay, with power vision, yeah. 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 I don't know. Let's turn that from the radio So Tim, what are you going to do with this bike then? It's a pretty the brand new bike, 117. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go around Jet Mallory Park and we can get a third lapse of session maybe. So you're going to get more experience in one corner and we get a little lapse. Okay, so there's a box. <laughs> and what's in the box? 4.5 inch high flow catalytic touring muffler, yeah. power tuned dual headers. Black with highlight machine thruster end caps. Thruster end caps, that sounds interesting. And who makes that then? It's SNS. SNS. Eldorado exhaust package. Okay, so uh, that's going to go on here then, and then it's going to be remapped, I assume, using the power vision. Just hope it fits. <laughs> yeah, just hope it fits, I'm sure it will. SNS makes some good stuff. So all of that's going to come off. <laughs> yep. Plus this footrest, I Yeah. Take off anyway. Make it easy. Oh yeah. This is brand new, and therefore the nuts and bolts should come out quite easily. Pedal moving down and in. Okay. Yeah. Are these all in shock standard, or are they aftermarket on this bike? No, they're aftermarket. Aftermarket, yeah. yeah. He's basically fitted those in the last week. Okay. Um, he's thinking about, he's got, I don't know, he reckons they've got special forks on the front there. But, yeah. Uh, we'll see, he might have my ability where he uh, try and get him to have some tracker, K Tech trackers in the front. Okay, okay. Oh. See how he gets on when he's had it, when he ups his speed from the tuning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's a hot day. Yeah. You're out here in the sunshine, so uh, I'll leave you to it for now. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll probably come back another day to see it when it's all done and on the dyno. It'll be on the dyno tomorrow. On the dyno tomorrow, okay. Not sure I will be here though, but uh, you never know. And now here we are in the dyno room, and it looks like somebody's getting a brand new exhaust pipe. There's the old one there. And underneath it, I see there's some packaging for Acropovic. 
And here it is on the bike. And the bike in question is a BMW 1000 XR. A brand new pipe, like a Povic pipe, and down pipes as well, I think. And uh, no doubt it's also going to be given a new map to match. While today it looks like there's going to be some unusual bikes on the dyno. There's the Motor Marini outside, there's the big Harley 117, and there's this Motor Guzzi Griso or Griso, not sure how you pronounce it. It's very nice. And no doubt Sam will now tell me all about it. Can tell you about it if you want. Please do. You have to be specific, what would you like to know? Okay, well, it's a, let's see, it's a 13 plate. 1200cc Griso, which is 8 valve, I know, because the first ones were 4 valve. And it's here on your dyno. For what reason? Mapping, of course. Mapping, of course. Uh, fuel mapping specifically. You know, there's some bit of ignition work, but the main thing is fuel mapping. Yeah. Uh, and the chap's tried various maps over the few months he's had on the bike. Uh, maps that he's got off forums, that sort of thing. Well, he's and, downloaded uh, it, yeah, yeah. Ultimately, he's not been happy with any of them. Yeah. So. You know, some of them are good in places and crap in other places, but none of them are a complete job. No. So it's come down to it, he's had to accept that uh, the job has to be done properly. Yeah, yeah. So I take it's got a loud pipe on it, that's a non standard pipe. No, yeah, that's a standard job. I know. No, it's not. It's no, the it's not. official term. It okay. is a guzzy one, it's yeah. stamped up guzzy. I think standard ones are huge. Um, so is that being done with an ECU flash or with a PC pipe? Yeah, direct pipe? to ECU this Back one. Direct to ECU, you can do that. Uh, so we have Bluetooth connection, which gives us all the the data logging of the vehicle effectively, yeah, not yeah. the data logging of the fuel. The dyno will do the, the logging of the fuel. We've got the data which is showing off the model position, uh, all our sensors. Yeah, yeah. So keep an eye on that, I've got on the tablet. So it's been, the you've already run it on once? Screen. It's what, sorry? It's only been run once or twice. Well, I've it's really had a few runs up and down, the procedure takes quite a lot of yeah, runs, you see. Yeah. Um, so we've done bits and bobs, and then a bit of experimentation to check the yeah. tables working correctly. Yeah. And now we're sort of halfway between the Halfway through the main job, but unfortunately, yeah. I've got a, uh, a blade hooked in now. So right. the blade has to go on just for a basic oh, right. power commander mapping. Okay. Okay, it's bloody baffled. So, how much power did it make before. Uh, oops, you just pull the baffle out. Yeah, you see, I've had to put the probe oh, well, through the, the baffle there. Yeah. So, if you just to put the probe down to there, like a lot would, then you wouldn't get good reading. No, it's just too so far. So, by out. doing that, I've managed to get the probe right on deep. The, the good side of the baffle. Okay. okay. So, I'll leave that for later. Yeah. He doesn't want it running with the baffle out. How much power does it make now before you've sort of done much with it? Uh, well, so 100? 94, something oh, like that. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Low 90s, which is bang on, you know. Yeah. He's not interested in top end. No, no, it's talk. He'll get quite a lot of top end because the fuel is shite up there and the ignition mapping's lazy as well. Yeah. So he will get a really good gain. He'll get at least 10%. He'll yeah. go from 90 to just over 100, I think, at okay. the wheel. But he's. Can we hear it before you take it off? Or I should take it off. Can we just hear it going? It must sound pretty nice with that. Uh... Well, I've not heard that the lap will have. Oh, right. Oh well. He's really good at the baffle in for him. Yeah, it's a very specific setup. Baffle out, baffle in doesn't make too much difference sometimes, only a few percent. But if you haven't seen the setup perfectly because you want to spot up, yeah. you have it done right, don't you? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's one of the few bikes I consider buying new or newish. I really like them. It's nice, and they really hold the value. Yeah, so, yeah. They don't depreciate very much. Nice range. Yeah, nice. That's what I like. Proper motorbike. Yes, isn't it? Real motorbike, that sounds like a real yes, motorbike to me. Rub, 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 rub. Okay, so you're going to put a fire blade on now, are you? The fly the fire blade out there? Yeah, the white one. 14 blade. Got a power commander on it for some reason. Um, obviously, we'd normally do the direct to the ECU using the Woolwich Racing software, which is far superior for that sort of bike, to be honest. Yeah. Not there's anything wrong with the power commander, it does an excellent job, but it's, it, there's a lot you can do with them. Mm -hmm. However, this chap's got a power commander that's obviously on the bike when he bought it, so we'll just get into it. Yeah, okay. Okay, Sam, so you're now taking the bike to bits so that you can access the... I'm What's going it? to access the, uh, the coil, basically, the low tension wires to the coil. And once we've got to those, then I can get an accurate pick up of the engine speed. And the best way to do it on a blade, unfortunately, is to get in there. Some bikes it's easy, some bikes you just like hop onto them, but the blade you can't. Once you've done that, you're going to put everything back on again before you then run it up. I'm not going to put the side panel back on, no. but obviously the back air scoop and everything will have to go back on to get a true reading. Okay, so you have to take off the side 
the side panels. Okay, so we move the side panel, panel the ramp top in filtering, okay. then the air scoop which is in there. Well, just yeah. And then after reaching the hole where the ram air scoop goes in through the fray, uh, lift up the, the flap, you know, the heat insulating stuff, and then I think it right. straight yep. on. Took it all out of the way, which is bloody awkward. Block off the um, secondary air system at the same time with the clamp. Took the clamp right out of the way. Then reassemble. Then do all the buttons. Then when I finish, then take it apart again and do it. Up. Yeah. It's not as easy as it appears. Now uh, these blades are a bit of a nightmare for just having lots of stuff to do. time you will see minus figures in the tables, bikes are very rich and standard, but you see the minus figure, absolutely massive, so straight away alarm bells are ringing, you know, yeah. to have minus 20s at the top here, that's a huge amount, you're thinking, was the bike even mapped with a fault with it, was something going wrong with it, they tried to map out a fault, we so you're thinking, before, is it going to be not very well. Yeah, it has else. had a map in it, I won't say who it, it was no, mapped no. by, that's irrelevant, no. um, but it has had a map, but we don't know if it was mapped on this exhaust, we know nothing about the map yeah, at yeah, all, yeah, the customer we, doesn't know, he's no, not had the bike no. that long, okay. um, so alarm bells are ringing with these very lean figures, or it suggests um, that Perhaps there's a reason. Perhaps before that pipe went on. Possibly, Possibly. we don't know what it's for, no. and then you can see here, it's actually, it's so lean, yeah. uh, I'm not even going to do another base run, because it's going to cook itself, that's, yeah. that's no good for it at all. No, no. Um, so that's what we're going to take as our maximum. I'm not prepared to keep running it as that because you're just going to drum a load of heat into the plug. Well, it won't do any well. good. It's a hot day as well. Isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So. Um, so we're going to take that as our our base figure. I'll save that as our maximum original that yeah. we've got. Normally I would run it and run it until really it's peaked. It will get more and more powerful yeah. until it tips over a point. You know, 14, 15 runs from being at operating temperature, yeah. and then it will start to lose a couple. But with it being running like this, I'm not prepared to keep no. running it like that for ages. No. We don't care. We just want to have it right now. So yeah, what I'll just do now so that is, people uh, know, the dotted line there at 13, that's kind of how it should be. Anything yeah, I've got my reference line, line there, 13.2. It should be, above the line is weak, anything below the line is rich. Is that yeah, right? that's yeah. pretty and much that, and, and that's pretty up, much yeah. weak all the way around, all the way through. On a, a litre bike like this, on the 100% throttle at least, we're going to be looking for 13.1, 13.2 yeah. throughout the rev range. Uh, we're actually going to dip it down a little bit richer at the start, just to soften it when you wax it wide open off idle, which... Inevitably, people will do. Yeah, yeah as you do. It's what, it's what big bikes are for. So, yeah, so what I will do now is I will get rid of that map entirely. I'll Start put it again. to a zero map. Okay. Put it again at zero map and then okay. move there. Okay, well, I'm going to go home now and see a dog. But when we find out, when you've done it later on, I'll remember to ask how much power it made and we can put it on the video just for sort of uh, completion purposes. Yeah, 177. You reckon 177? Yeah. Maybe not quite there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, between 174 and 177. Okay. I think okay. it's a hot day today, so yeah, yeah. we'll see where we start. Okay, and with that, we'll call it quits, because as I say, I've got to go home.